Good afternoon, everybody. So it's Thursday. We just got home from market. The guy's got a ton of stuff picked, so let me show you what's going on. Before I go into the shed here, I'll show you what my mom got picked. She has some orangitas, some pumpkinmons, gourds, weeby littles, and some pumpkins over there. The first thing we're going to move into tonight is washing. We got a lot of eggplant and a bunch of different peppers. So if you haven't seen me do this before in my earlier videos, how it works is I put them on the belt. They go through the washer underneath the sprayers. They roll themselves clean along with getting sprayed by water. Then they come out onto the drying belt where they dry off. Then they'll go onto the round table where my dad will pick them off and pack them into the crates. At my end of the washer, my job is obviously make sure I put them on the belt, keep my dad supplied, and make sure there's no bad ones going through. Then down at my dad's end, his job is to also make sure there's no bad ones and then pack them into the crates so then they're ready to go into the cooler for the next day at market. So this is what all the peppers look like after they're packed and put in the crates. And then once he fills all these carts up, they'll get run into the cooler. We usually keep the cooler at about 40 to 50 degrees. And in here right now what we have some more peppers that we just washed, some cauliflower, cabbage, bags of potatoes, and these boxes here is some zucchini. So beautiful for this time of year. Then we have some Brussels sprouts, and actually this is one of the last pickings. We might have one more time yet to pick. We have some red cayenne peppers here. So the first thing I'm actually gonna pick tonight is tomatoes. Now the tomatoes in our field are starting to get pretty rough looking with this cold weather. And just because the season's starting to come to an end, they're not looking so hot anymore. But we are still picking them. We still have orders for canners and stuff like that. And those tomatoes in the field are still perfect for that. They're not rotten, but they just have little blemishes on them. But for now, for market tomorrow, I wanna get some nice table tomatoes, so I'm in the high tunnel. Now if you watched my earlier videos, we started out in the high tunnel and we're gonna finish the season in the high tunnel. In my opinion, high tunnels are definitely the way to go. Just because you can keep them up tied on these posts so they're off the ground. They're out of the weather, you can control the water. And in the end, the tomatoes just last a lot longer because you can keep them in here when it's colder out. And then when it's hot out, you can raise the sides. Like these sides here will roll up and down if it's cold or warm. And then you can just pick them so much later. Like our tomatoes are almost done now in our field but still we're pulling out almost perfect tomatoes just because we can control them and they're out of that weather, like I said. Some people get nervous when they hear tomatoes coming out of high tunnels because they automatically think they don't have good flavor because that's what happens in the grocery stores. But for somebody like us, that's their homegrown and their vine ripened, the tomatoes have just as good a flavor, if not better than in the field. But even though the tomatoes are a lot nicer and they're easier picking in the high tunnels, it comes with a lot more work. Once these tomatoes are done, you have to pull the plants out, pull the stakes out, sanitize them in case there's any kind of disease, pull the tarp up from the bottom, till the ground, put some kind of winter crop in, then next spring, till it up, lay our fabric, drip tape, and then start playing our tomatoes, pounding the stakes back in, stringing them up, and then watering them every single day. So yes, it is nice we have these beautiful tomatoes, but it definitely did not come easy. Now, because of all this work and time we have to put into these tomatoes, we do charge more. Usually, in the beginning of the season, we get around $150 to $2 per tomato, but that's only because it costs us so much to run this high tunnel. Just to build a high tunnel this size, it costs about $10,000. So, after paying expenses and labor, it may take us a couple years to pay this thing off. The fabric that you see here on the ground costs about $250 per roll, and we usually use a whole roll on the greenhouse. So you might think, oh, we'll just save money and don't put stuff like fabric down. That would save us $250. Well, we've done that in the past, and you would not believe the amount of weeds that come up. And on top of doing everything else on the farm, that's just another job we don't want to have to try and take care of. So then there's the stakes that tomatoes are tied up on. They cost about 75 cents each, and we've got about 100 of them in here. Then there's the drip tape underneath the plastic that you can't see that we bury next to each row of tomatoes so that we can water them. That costs $150. You've got the couple boxes of string that we use that you see there tied up to hold all the tomatoes up. They cost about $35 a box. And then that's not including starting from the beginning of the season, tilling the ground, making rows so you can lay your drip tape, covering the drip tape, 
laying your fabric, pounding the steaks in, planting the tomatoes, tying the tomatoes. And then once the season's over, like I said, pulling all the tomatoes out and pulling the steaks out and sanitizing, there's just so much. And don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining. I love every single step in this process. It's great, it's a fun time. If I didn't like it, I wouldn't do what I do. There is benefits to growing them in the field though. When we lay the plastic, we can lay them with a plastic layer so it's a lot faster. We can plant the plants with a planter so we don't have to plant them all by hand. And then we don't have to water them all every single day and we don't stake them. So it's a lot easier, but they are a lot more susceptible to the weather and to animals that way. Sometimes you'll see me pick a tomato and just lay it on the ground instead of putting it in the basket. And that's because that's what we call a number two. It just has a small blemish on it. And I just don't want to mix them together in the same basket. So once I'm done, I'm going to go back through with a different basket, pick them all up, and then I'm going to take them all back to the shed. So now moving on to green tomatoes. There's not a lot of demand for them, but there is certain customers that absolutely love them. And we don't wanna let one customer out, so we're gonna pick them. That way everybody's satisfied. So I just got done with tomatoes and this is what they're looking like. I got nine baskets in total, eight red, one green. And you can see there's almost not one blemish in any of them. They're all really, really beautiful. And that's all because of them being in the high tunnel. So now that tomatoes are done, I'm gonna move into turnips. And I don't know who it was, but one of you guys asked me in the comments if you could see the leaves and everything this time of year. Now with all the rain and the warm weather, they're not turning a lot yet. And what I'm afraid is gonna happen is instead of them turning, they're just gonna turn brown and fall because that's just the way this year kind of seems like it's gonna be. But anyway, this is what it's looking like. That's what happens when you have too much rain. They actually just split right in half. So 
So far, the turnips have been doing really well this year. They're kind of picked just like a red beet, but they're not planted like almost anything else on the farm. How we plant turnips is we'll prepare the field and then we'll just walk on the outside of the field where we want them to be planted with a handheld seeder and we'll just kind of broadcast them over top of the ground. So that's kind of why they're just like sporadic all over the field. Some are really close, some are a little bit further apart. That's just because we really can't control it and they go wherever they want to go. We cut the tops off the turnips for two reasons. One reason is because we just don't have sale for them, and the other reason is because we can wash them a lot easier that way. The tops don't go to waste though. Just like the red beet tops, they'll go to my neighbor's pigs, and they absolutely love them. So I just got done with turnips. I wanted to get three baskets, but they just aren't ripening like I wanted them to. So I only got two for today, but I'll show you what they look like. They're still really nice. I just didn't want to get them much smaller than this, so I just let it go with two. But now it's almost dark and I'm gonna head out. So as always, thank you guys for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. And always remember, it ain't much, but it's honest work.